Hi there, everybody. My name is Lauren Spring, and I'm a teaching and learning consultant here with Conestoga College. On today's short video, we're going to be discussing group work as an effective learning and assessment experience. You can see down here at the bottom, I've included our general email for our teaching and learning team, where you can reach out to myself and any of my consultant colleagues with any questions you may have about teaching and learning at Conestoga. On this particular learning pathway, we're going to discuss what group work is. Then we'll take a look at some best practices when it comes to setting up groups, guiding groups, and marking group work. We'll discuss as well the benefits of group work and some challenges that are associated with group work and what to do when things go wrong. And then at the end, I'll share some Faculty Learning Hub links to longer reads on the subject that you may find helpful. So what is group work? Essentially, it's students working together on a project. Now, this often results in a group presentation or a submitted written document for evaluation. Group work provides different challenges than individual assignments. I know when I reflect on my long career as a student, um, I was always quite apprehensive when it came to group work. Um, it's also important to remember that group work might be new to some of our students. Um, of course, we have many international students at Conestoga who might not have been learning this way in academic settings prior to arriving here. Group work should always tie directly to course learning or program outcomes. Now, depending on the course you're teaching, um, this might be essential or optional for you. One of the ways to find this out is if you go to your course outline and look under evaluations, if group work is listed there, that means that it's been decided either by your chair or someone else who's connected to um, curriculum development, that it is a vital component of your course. In those cases, you won't have much choice in the matter. In some other cases, it's optional. Some courses as well at Conestoga are um, taught in many sections at the same time. And so if group work is in one of those sections, it has to be in all of them for the sake of consistency. When it comes to group work, both process and product are important, and both are typically reflected in the rubric. So this might vary again, depending on the course you're teaching. If you're teaching a course about group dynamics, then very likely process is going to be one of the, the main things being evaluated. It might even be worth 85 or 90 percent of the overall grade for the project. Um, if you're teaching a course on anatomy, <clears throat> um, then product might be sort of the primary thing being evaluated, in which case the process might only be worth, say, 10 percent of the overall grade for the project. <clears throat> Now I've listed here a few best practices in group work, and I'll go through them here and then we'll explore some of them in greater detail in the coming slides. So one of the things many faculty find helpful is to break the ice with low or no stakes group with tasks before the main assessment. So let's say group um, project is going to be due in week 14 and you're planning on assigning the groups in week nine, so they have several weeks to work together. In week four or five of the course, you might want to consider during your class meeting time, just having some very short, low stakes group work, um, active learning opportunities so students can get accustomed to working together in this way. I would also highly suggest having students create a group contract so that they can think through possible problems and resolutions before they arise. Econestoga has a great tool that can randomly generate groups as well. Um, I would also suggest that you as the faculty member create a shared OneDrive document that you own and you visit and that group members contribute to. It's also helpful to chunk, chunk the group work into manageable stages of completion, giving students sort of um, pointers along the way saying, okay, but you've, by week 11, I want to see that you've completed this. By week 12, you should be here <clears throat> just to make sure everyone is staying on track. I would also suggest allowing class time for group work once the groups have been assigned. So some faculty do this for the first 10 or 20 minutes of class. And if you're teaching in person, I would suggest having students meet in their groups with their chairs and tables, you know, around the room accordingly, and that you make time to stop in with each group just to make sure um, that everyone's doing okay and to answer any questions they may have. If you're teaching on Zoom, then you can easily do this as well by putting students into different breakout groups and then you join each one and do a similar check-in. Um, it also is a best practice for you as the professor to remove social loafers. Those are group members who are not really pulling their weight a few weeks prior to the project's end. All of these rules, of course, should be in writing and discussed with students. 
When creating a group contract, um, I would invite my students to consider how to handle late or non-completion of tasks, how to handle absences, meeting expectations, and conflict resolution. A caveat to this is if there's any instance of coercion or harassment within the group, um, this is when you get involved. This is not on the students to try to um, respond um, or handle it themselves. This is really where you step in. As mentioned, Econostoga has a feature that can randomly generate groups according to the size that you indicate. I would suggest using this tool. Um, it does help, uh, you know, if students are self-selecting, they might choose to go with their friends or their roommates, and it doesn't really get that mix that you can get um, full, full benefit of group work. It also would leave some people out. There's always going to be a student or two who isn't selected or is selected last. And so these, this random generation really is quite helpful. Um, that said, you might also let students know that if there's some sort of extenuating circumstance, um, which makes it very difficult for them to work to some, with someone that they've been assigned um, to work with in the same group, they can come to you and you might have to shift a few things behind the scenes. How many students should be in a group? Well, uh, three is really ideal, four is functional, and five is possible but not ideal. Also, small groups like this better mimic real life situations when it comes to co-delivering presentations or collaborating on written documents. Of course, some students, I'm thinking of nurses, for example, they'll work in much larger teams on a day-to-day -day basis, but when it comes to these sorts of presentations and collaborating on a document, even then the teams tend to be smaller. As mentioned, I highly suggest that uh, when it comes to group work, the faculty member creates a document for each group and then invites the group members to join. Um, this way you can discuss protocol in advance so students know how to sign in and that they're very aware that you're going to be visiting the document as well um, and just sort of tracking who's doing what and when and how often. This also makes it easier on students because it means that they're then not required to exchange phone numbers, how to set meetings outside of class time. We know that many of our students have family obligations and are for paid employment outside of their studies. But if there's a shared document that they can contribute to daily um, whenever it's convenient for them, um, that can alleviate some of that anxiety. And these documents can be shared in Econostoga. And if you're interested in this but haven't used this technology before and need some support, then we have two members of our team, Jesslyn and Adam, who are tech experts, and they're here to support you. You can see their email addresses below. I also mentioned that um, it's helpful if the faculty member is the one who removes social loafers uh, before the assignment deadline. If you do find that there's a student who's not doing their fair share, you can remove them from the group and delegate an individual assignment. Now, this should be adjusted for one person. Of course, they're not to be expected to take on the entirety of the group project on their own. Um, it would be adjusted and still allow them an opportunity to demonstrate the learning or program outcome associated with the project. And you taking this on will help avoid some last minute group conflicts as the due date approaches. So one of the reasons that group work is so beneficial is because it can build collaboration and communication opportunities. And these are two key 21st century working and learning skills um, often reflected in the research. It also provides an opportunity for formative feedback from both the professor and peers. You may also decide to include self-assessment as part of the process so students can reflect on their own journey, kind of working with others and their, the way they bring contributions to the team. There are, of course, some challenges associated with group work as well. <clears throat> Peer evaluation is often tricky. Um, if it is part of the assignment, it should only represent a small component of the overall grade on the rubric because we don't know actually if students are skilled enough to evaluate fairly and according to the rubric. It's of course the professor's role to determine whether students have met the course or program learning outcomes. There's also uh, the potential for student appeals. If there's some sort of coercion or some sort of dynamic in the group that you know, impacts the way one student is evaluated um, by their peers, then they might appeal. Uh, students have the right to appeal if they feel assignment instructions were unclear, if support or guidance from the professor was insufficient, or if grading was not prompt, fair, and consistent, as outlined in the evaluation of grading procedure. So you can see here, too, your responsibility to making sure to make sure that you're guiding students well through this process. Um, 
And then one question faculty often have is should all students in the same group receive the same grade? So in many cases, yes, they do. Sometimes it depends on the criteria being evaluated in the rubric. For example, if part of what's being evaluated are students' individual presentation skills, you know, their, their volume when they're, they're sharing their part of the project, that might differ slightly student to student. Um, but in many cases, they do receive the same grade. One of the things I would highly suggest is attaching a rider to your uh, assignment instructions and to the rubric, saying that you have the right to apply different grades in exceptional circumstances. We have an example of such a rider on our faculty learning hub under um, a post titled rubric items and riders. And you can see here, if you were to note this, it's really a, a way of protecting yourself. So you might say something like, I reserve the right to assign different marks to different team members if there is evidence of differential contributions. So this will protect you in the event that you do decide to um, grade students in the same group differently. So one thing that uh, students and faculty actually both often wonder is whether group work cuts down on marking time. Uh, the short answer is not really. Um, of course, if you're guiding group projects very well and you're very hands on about it, um, it will actually maybe even result in more contact and support time for students than you would have for an individual assignment. However, if you do scaffold this process very well and everything is clear um, and all students are contributing, then it might actually at the end of the term uh, result in slightly less grading time if you can easily sort of uh, uh, offer students in the same group the same grade. So as noted, here are some links to longer reads on the subject, lots of topics related to group work here that you might find helpful. And here are some references that I cited in this video. So um, an important document for you is the evaluation of student learning procedure and as well the student appeals process. And I'll link to these below this video too so you can easily click on them. Thanks so much for joining me today and I wish you the best of luck with all of your group assignments. Bye.